Welcome everybody to episode three of the best Apple Watch app, where every single month I'll show you the most useful apps for you to take the full potential of your Apple Watch. All right, let's get started with an app that has literally been released this exact month. And this is Globetrotter. It's basically a travel tracker that lets you know where you've traveled around the world. Now it knows where you've been automatically and you'll understand why in just a second when I show you the iPhone app. So it lets you know first off the percentage of the world that you've seen. So I've traveled 12% of all countries in the entire world, which is pretty cool. I've traveled to four continents, Africa, Asia, Europe, and North America. And then I've been to 25 countries, Andorra, Canada, Cayman Islands, Czech Republic, France, Germany, etc. So it's pretty cool. The Apple Watch app itself, if you travel a lot, I think you're gonna love this. But what's even cooler is the iPhone app. It looks very similar to the iPhone app, the Photos iPhone app. There's a bunch of things that you can do. For example, the standard, your standard photos. Something pretty cool is that you can actually customize or filter out the photos by year. So if you just wanna see photos from 2019, for example, it will filter all those photos just for 2019. Um, you can also check out memory. So I can add a new memory and I can, oh, I remember this exact trip that me and Chenya went to, for example. It will play a, a little bit of music, for example. You can share it with friends. You've got the world map. You've also got Globetrotter friends. So me and Chenya, for example, we're sharing so we can see, you know, what each and one of us, um, where we've traveled around the world. And this is my personal favorite part of the app. This is what the Apple Watch app actually does. 12% travel, 25 countries. So the Apple Watch app is fairly limited, but I think this is pretty nice to have on the watch app itself. And what did I mean? Because it does all of this automatically. Since it's a photos app, it's a focused photos app slash travel tracker. It will let you know when I was in London. So you don't have to do anything. A lot of travel tracking apps, you know, you have to manually put where you've been. This, it does it all automatically, so it's pretty cool. You've also got the 2023 wrap, for example. So kind of like Spotify wrap, but for photos, which is nice. You've also got the world travel scratch map. So you can actually see all the places that you've been around the world, which is super cool to see. And then later on, you can actually share the image on Instagram or you can send it via iMessage, world travel scratch map, which is pretty cool. And then last but definitely not least, well, you've got the flags collected. You can actually collect flags. And then we've got off screen and off screen is one of those apps that I've actually been using almost daily on my Apple Watch. So there's a lot of things that you can do with it. First off, it lets you know the screen time of your iPhone in a more in-depth way. And it actually lets you know directly from your watch, which is a thing that, you know, is not available yet. You can set screen time limits on your iPhone. So if you want three hours, you can just go ahead and tap on set. The app will also help you focus. And that's the main reason that I actually use this app. I can actually tap on play, start to focus. So I've actually got different focus sessions. For example, I've got my working session, I've got my studying session, or I've got my work session. All of these have different timing. So for example, all right, I'm going to go ahead and tap on working and I can actually do a Pomodoro technique, a countdown, or simply at a time. So as you can see, if I do a countdown, it already knows that it's down to 25 minutes, but I can add whatever I want and I can go ahead and start to focus. And from there, I can start focusing. So I grab my Mac and I start working and I already know that I've got a 25 minute working session, studying session. And then once the time is up, I can do a break and I can go ahead and do it again. If not, I can go ahead and do a Pomodoro technique. As you can see, Pomodoro, working duration 25, and there you go. I am now doing a tomato Pomodoro technique. Check out the iPhone app though. The iPhone app is very similar to the watch app, but it does tell you a little bit more info on your iPhone usage, on your screen time. For example, I've picked up my time 80 times today and it basically lets you know if that's good or if it's not. For example, my limit is 60 times. It's already 5 p.m. and I've already picked it up more than 80 times, which is a lot. It just lets you know, you know, while walking, I've been using it for three minutes, so I'm pretty proud of that today. I haven't really used it while walking. There's some days that I've literally been using it for 15 or 20, and it basically lets you know, hey, like you shouldn't be using. And it also sends you a notification, hey, you're using your phone while walking, you shouldn't do that, you know? But maybe you're working, but it just makes you aware of everything. This is also pretty cool, the focus feature, right? The same thing on the watch, but on the iPhone, it also takes advantage of the dynamic island and of live activity. So as you can see, I can simply do that and it will let you know. If Apple made a toothbrush, this would be it. I mean, first off, if you just take a look at the design of the box and the unboxing experience, you can see 
that it feels like if Apple made it. There's tons of features that make it a revolutionary toothbrush. First off, you've got oscillation with vibration. Usually electric toothbrushes, they vibrate, but they don't do anything. Instead, the Life in Toothbrush vibrates, but it also does oscillation. So it basically does like this to your teeth. So you basically just put it in your mouth and it does all the toothbrushing for you. You can actually customize the oscillation, the power, the vibration, everything within the Life in app on your iPhone. Yes, your toothbrush now has an app. You see that little airplane mode icon? Yes, the Life in Toothbrush also has airplane mode. Now hear me out. Have you ever been traveling and you brought an electric toothbrush or maybe your shaver, you put it in your suitcase and then suddenly something bumps into it and suddenly your toothbrush is on. And then when you get home, your electric toothbrush is out of battery. Well, that's why this has airplane mode. So you can tap it all you want. It's actually locked so it won't waste your battery. You've got a braided cable that us as Apple fans, we love. It's also USB-C and you kind of charge it like MagSafe. It comes in three materials, aluminum, stainless steel, and this beautiful white. And just looking at the design of it, I'm absolutely obsessed, which by the way, I actually uploaded an Instagram reel on it and it got 12 million views. So I can see why everybody loves this thing. Thank you Lifen for sponsoring this part of the video and the Instagram reel. But I mean, seriously, people love this thing. People, I love it. I've been using it every single day. It's so cool how you just put it in your mouth and it just, yeah. As you can see, I'm very passionate about Lifen. Links in the description if you wanna get one and pre-order it. I have the white one. I'm getting the stainless steel one soon and I'm absolutely obsessed. Lifen, thank you so much for creating such such an apple toothbrush that I'm just obsessed with. Next up is Suzy. If you're allergic to gluten, if you're vegan, vegetarian, you're allergic to peanuts, you have any dietary restrictions. When you travel, it can be quite stressful because maybe you're vegan, you don't want to eat any meat and you want to make sure your food doesn't have any milk or eggs or meat. If you're allergic to peanuts, you don't want peanuts to be in your food. The iPhone app is extremely useful. And what the Apple Watch app does, it's basically translation for specific things. For example, I cannot have the food if it is cooked or prepared with oils which contain my allergy. So I basically tap that and then I can actually translate it into a bunch of different languages. And what's cool is check this out. If I actually twist it, it starts translating. So basically, if you're at the restaurant, you can basically just, okay, this is a very serious condition. You can choose the language that you want to translate it all on the iPhone app. And you've got a bunch of different phrases and sentences that are all programmable, obviously, in the iPhone app. I am vegan and don't eat products that are derived from animals. Isn't that cool? If you love the ocean, you go swimming a lot outdoors, or if you sail by boat, Tide Guide is your go-to app because Tide Guide, well, as the app says, it's a Tide Guide. So it will basically let you know the most important information surrounding, well, it's basically a Tide Guide, right? It will let you know all the falling tides, for example, what exact time. You can also see the weather info, the wind, what time the sunrise is, how dark it will get, when it will get, the degrees of the water, you know, all the crucial information if you sail. I mean, this is a go-to. It's also a very beautifully designed app and it's also been updated for that watchOS 10 design language. I mean, just look how beautiful this sunset infographic is right here. You can also check the tide tables, all the information from there and the charts. So depending on which weekday you want to check, you've got it all right here. So, I mean, if you're a lover of the ocean, you might want to get this. And Tide Guide really shines on the iPhone. I mean, just look how beautiful this design truly is. I can actually keep scrolling to the right. I've got different menus from the tables that I was showing you before on the watch, seeing it bigger on the iPhone screen. But I think, you know, this app is built for the watch. Once you're in the boat, you know, just being able to quickly check on the stats that you need on the go on the watch, I think it can be really useful. But on the iPhone, it's obviously more extensive. It's more beautiful. It's larger. You know, you've got tons more information and tons more you know, um, customization in terms of the app, you can actually change the colors of the app. I think there's, I mean, this app is so dynamic, so beautiful. Definitely recommend it if you're an ocean lover. And then we've got days. We're always so excited for Christmas, for a birthday, maybe for a specific trip that you're going. And days will let you count down those exact days. So for example, Christmas, I can't believe that I'm saying this, but it's in seven days, for example. What else? The New Year's is in 14 days. Valentine's Day is in 58 days. So these are the things that I'm personally counting down. So it's a super cool app that lets you do that. You can also add complications on your watch face that basically let you know a number seven and it will let you know that it's Christmas. Instead of upcoming, you can also track past 
countdowns. For example, I counted down my birthday, which was 34 days ago. Very simple app. It lets you count down the days for your most favorite days of the year. And then days on the iPhone is exactly the same as on the watch. But what's cool is that you can add, you know, different events and the widget itself. As you can see, I've got a days widget on my home screen so I can quickly check how many days are left for that specific event, just not even by needing to open the app, which is nice. So there you have it. That's episode three of the best Apple Watch apps. If you wanna check out episode one or episode two, there's some really good apps in there for you to check out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Subscribe if you're new. Bye-bye.